Hi, my name is Katie McClymont and I'm the programme leader for the MSc in Urban Planning here at UWE. I've been programme leader for about the last five years. I've been at UWE for now 11 years, seems like only minutes ago, um, as well as being programme leader, which means I'm in charge of the first point of contact around admissions or problems you've got if you come here on the course. I also teach on the programme quite substantially. I teach on one of the core modules and two of the option modules at present. I'll go into that in a bit more detail um, as I carry on in this talk. First thing I want to say is, as you're all more than well aware, there's a lot of uncertainty at the moment about what the next few weeks, the next few months are going to bring. We are monitoring the situation very closely here at UWE and trying to make sure, well, however we proceed in the next academic year, will not hamper your student experience coming here. We'll try to make it work both flexibly and in a supportive manner. I can't say anything more concrete than that at the moment. I don't know any more concrete at the moment. All I can say is that when lockdown started, you transitioned pretty successfully to online teaching. I've been able to stay in touch with all my programme cohort and support them through assessments of what has been a really, really tricky time. So what I am going to do in the rest of this talk is just say a little bit more about how the course runs, what the modules covered, what I think makes it a really exciting and dynamic programme to come and join. First thing I'm going to do is give an outline of the course. Again, as you're probably aware, if you've got as far as finding this video, the course runs both full time and part time. Full time delivery is done over an academic year. Two modules taken first semester, second semester, one large module, two option modules. And then running over that period, there is a dissertation or an option of a dissertation and a work based learning programme as alternatively the smaller dissertation. For part-timers, that's spread over two years with one large module each semester for the first year and a half, two option modules for the second semester of the second year, and then the dissertation with a bit more time to finish that option of the work-based learning and the small one um, are still out there too. So the structure runs that if you're a part-timer, you, uh, if you're a full-timer, you'll be one set of part-time students, some modules, another set, the other module, which is really nice as I go and talk about the course ethos a bit more. It means everybody gets to mix and everybody gets to meet and we've got some really um, nice strong study groups, friendship groups and professional support going on into later years of your profession coming out of that. So the course, as I said, divides into modules, not surprising there. Um, there are three core modules which are each 30 credits. That is what everybody will take and everybody will do the same during the programme. First, plan making, pretty much what the title you would expect is about the planning system, about the key themes, housing, climate change, transport, energy, and how these are managed at national, sub-national, regional, city level, local authority level, and also neighbourhood level. The sorts of um, instruments that are out there and the sorts of debates that are being had around how do we solve the housing crisis? How can we tackle climate change at the neighbourhood level? So that's the first module everyone would do, whether you're a full-timer or a part-timer. That's your first module, first semester. The next module, this is for full-timers, this will be the first module of your second year if you're part-timer, is the history and theory of urban planning. That's the module I'm module leader for. It asks some of those more fundamental questions about why do we have a planning system? Whose interests does it serve? Can it make both more environmentally and socially just places? How do we go about that? How do we look at different groups in societies? How do we look more internationally? Unpicking some of the concepts, some of those ideas, such as planning being in the public interest. The third core module is implementation and design quality. This covers some of the legal and technical aspects of planning, it involves planning law and the planning structures and regulations, and also thinks about how planning decisions are made, so how something is granted planning permission. And that's been assessed in a very lively way through doing a mock version of an inquiry in recent years, which we did manage to substitute for online assessment this year. So extremely well done to module leader Adam Shepherd for managing to pull that off so smoothly. On top of those three core modules, there is a choice of two option modules out of six potential option modules. In the option modules, there are four sort of planning modules and two transport modules in that. More detail again is available on our website if you can't remember everything that I'm saying straight away. 
The two transport modules are transport policy and finance, changing travel behaviour. Uh, the planning modules, we have healthy cities, planning for conservation, that's a focus on the built environment, conservation of historical buildings, grassroots planning, which is about public involvement in planning, and urban design, which leans a bit more towards the design options. There's some complicated issues around timetabling, but generally you can take whichever of those six you want. There's a couple that end up clashing, this sometimes varies year on year and delivery, and it's far too complicated to go into in person, let alone trying to do that on a video. On top of that, there's either a 60 credit dissertation or a 30 credit dissertation and a 30 credit module called agency project, which is a work based learning project. With the 60 credit dissertation, you will undertake a fairly substantial bit of independent research. You'll be allocated a supervisor. That means one of the members of the teaching team across sustainable development, geography, architecture, our whole sort of cohort that fall together within our research centre of sustainable planning and environments. Be allocated to support you through that process. If you take the other option, the 30 and 30 option, you'll also get a supervisor and still undertake a piece of research. It's a slightly smaller scale project. And then there is an option of doing a five week work placement with public, private or voluntary sector organisations. We we're trying to run this last year, sort of the lockdown hit in. So I can't give you any direct experience of how that's run on this module. I have been involved with it as a fourth year undergraduate module of architecture and planning students. And it's an excellent module. It gets really live, hands on experience, particularly for those of you wanting to do this course as a career change conversion style course. This leads me nicely on to talking a bit more widely and broadly about the course, the course ethos and the um, course cohort. We have a very lovely, diverse range of people studying on this course. If you are coming back to education a little bit later in life and feeling a little bit anxious that you might stand out, being slightly older, a bit different, maybe somebody with children or something like that, it's very unlikely. There's normally a big range of ages, a big range of backgrounds, that's academic backgrounds, people coming from degrees such as physics and music as their first degree, or people coming from experience of related work in local authority practice, now wishing to take the next step in their career and convert this up to a master's level course. Of course, we still get people coming direct from undergraduate, often but not only geography, sometimes politics, economics, those sorts of courses, but we have no requirements. You have to have taken a certain subject to get onto the programme. We take from all and we don't assume prior knowledge on the basis of that. We work hard to try to get people to talk to each other. I've got some exciting ways of how we might be managing that at a bit more of a distance, maybe in the um, next year or so. But normally there's a really strong support network through things with WhatsApp and Facebook groups, as well as the Planning Society Facebook pages for, the pro for all the planning programmes that are here at UE. The course usually runs a couple of field trips. We normally have one UK trip, which is to a larger northern city. So we've been to Sheffield, we've been to Manchester, we've been to Liverpool, we've been to Birmingham in the past few years. This works as a really in-depth southern learning experience of a totally new context. We speak to people from the universities, from the city councils, from community organisations, from big development schemes that are going on in those cities. Those cities often represent quite a different context from people that have um, grown up, gone to university within the Southwest. And it's a really nice way of bringing together some of the things we've been thinking about in the classroom to see what that means on the ground. We also usually do a trip to Europe. The last few years that has been France. We've gone to Nantes and we've gone to Lyon in recent years to learn about a different planning system, to see how it's done differently, somewhere which is very close, both um, physically and for lots of our history, but has a very, very different approach to what it's mean by urban planning and how it's funded. All these field trips also offer great opportunities for students to get to know each other and get to know us as staff better. Lots of those informal conversations at field trips is where things like ideas for dissertations will have come up, something sparks an interest and then you're sitting on a tram going to the outskirts of Lyon and you have a conversation with myself or one of my colleagues and it turns into an idea which you then want to take further and explore yourself. Other things which I know lots of you probably be very keen to find out more about are jobs. We've had a very strong track record on graduate employment and MSc urban planning. I'm regularly contacted by employers who've got vacancies in both public sector and private sector work, looking for people in graduate programmes, looking for more specific planners. 
and they always speak very 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 highly of our graduates and come back to us and say oh, you've got some more that you can send to us we had a couple of successes of students going on to PhDs. So if any of you are interested more in the research angle, that can be opened up via this course as well. Again, that pinch of salt of uncertainty, don't know what the next week's going to bring, not sure what anything is going to look like. So I don't want to promise anything. But in the past, even getting over the economic crash, building back up to that, we have kept those really strong links with local employers, local and regional employers. And our graduates do seem to do very well and keep in touch and keep those lovely support networks, keep in touch with us, come back and talk to other students, all that sort of thing. So I've talked for quite a long time looking at my own face now and actually haven't been interrupted by any members of my family, which is a near miracle. Please drop me an email if you have any further questions about the programme. Again, as I said earlier in this thing, I can't yet know specifically what the start of term is going to look like for the upcoming academic year, but I'm more than happy to suggest further readings if people are interested, suggest sorts of interesting ideas or topics to be thinking of, or just answer any of the questions. I can't possibly do that in this talk. Um, even if I do talk for longer, I think you'll have all stopped watching as I'm going on about things and your specific questions won't necessarily come up so do drop me a message and I very much hope to hear from you soon and hope to see you in the future.